G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is IT Acquisitions time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Saturday morning. And uh, as you know, Thursday was not a good day for me. Um, but on my way home, uh, my mate um, told me to drop into his joint and uh, I came back with all of this. All right, so first off, let's take a look at This thing, this is a Unisurf notebook, as far as I'm concerned. Actually, it's not much better than a netbook, really. This is from, these, these are Aldi, right? You can buy these from Aldi. We're all familiar with these. We see them all the time. Aldi often have them. Now, this has got an Intel Atom 1.4 gig CPU in it, 4 gig of RAM, and a 32 gig SSD. Now you're probably sitting there going, that's rubbish backyard. I'm not kidding you. It has a 32 gig, 28 usable gig SSD. The problem is the RAM and the hard drive or story system are hard soldered to the motherboard of this thing. So I can't even upgrade it. Now, the only reason I know that is my mate's already had the back off it because he was actually going to try and see if he could put in a big hard drive and found that it's actually hard soldered to the motherboard. And so what you do for added storage with this thing, which most of you are probably familiar with this, is there's an SD slot just above my finger there. And you put in like a 128 gig SD card into it and you've got an extra 128 gig of storage. So it does work. It's got a very slow charge rate though. It takes nine to 18 hours to charge this up from dead flat. We have our power, USB 3, uh, where are we, mini HDMI, and SD. On the other side we have, uh, where are we here, here we are, we have a headphones plug, USB 2, okay. This has no ethernet capability it is a completely wi-fi unit now at the moment it has windows 10 on it let me boot it up and we're gonna have a bit of a sticky beak at it just another handy tool to have oh i think i took too long to boot into that there you go unisurf windows 10 let me try and get into the bios of this thing which I've got to try and do. It's still logged in. The reason I'm not showing you this thing booting is it's still logged in under my mate's profile. He hasn't trashed it. Um, so I said I would uh, mod it for him. He was nice enough, though, to put Macri and Reflect on it for me, as well as Firefox, which is nice. Um, what I'm going to do is use Macri to back it up I'm just trying to get into the bias of this thing before it boots there we go well, it's a bit washed out isn't it hang on see if I can drop that brightness down <laughs> I'm looking for the brightness key on it but I can't where's brightness I wonder Fruitcake. Okay. Okay, so it's a bit washed out. I don't think you're going to be able to see it real well, but uh, no, you're not. But essentially, it is. Uh, it's got four gig of RAM, DDR3. Um, 
CPU. So it is a Intel Atom CPU, 1.4 gig. It does have virtualization in it though, so it must be a dual core Atom CPU. Um, it is 64 bit. It is UFI enabled, but it does not have legacy, right? So this does not have legacy. This is a solely UFI boot BIOS. So it does work. Uh, oh, no, don't do that. So that's one thing I picked up. Can you see there? Unisurf. Now, what I'm probably going to do with this, if I get this thing to turn off, which it is not going to, I'm going to have to let it boot. That's a bit unfortunate. <laughs> I'm not really making good videos today, am I? That's only because I'm still not exactly 100% with it. I'll just leave that sit there for the moment. Oop. Now, the other two things I picked up, which are absolutely useless nowadays, or at least they're useless to me, are these two ISDN modems. Now, these are RAD modems, right, from RAD. That's the other half on the phone, if you can hear her. So they are an ASMI-52E12W. Now these were in a business which uh, I'm very, I, I know the business very well. I've helped my mate out at it a few times over the past three or four years now. These were running in what's called dual redundant failover ISDN connections. Okay. Basically, if one of these stopped working, the other one would pick up the slack. These were still in use here in Geelong until uh, the business moved some six years ago. These were the business's ISDN connection. And the main reason behind that was, was because of the building they were in, right, was already ISDN enabled going way back. Now, I don't remember what speed these units are or what they're capable of. Um, no, but these are basically what they had. They are 240 VAC, 100 to 240 multi-voltage units. And as you can see, one is jumping out there at the moment. Now, the reason these were being used in redundant mode was because of the type of business that these came out of. They could not afford to lose internet in any way, shape or form. They had to keep it going, all right? So the reason they had two of them is exactly the same reason you raid a server. Redundancy, one falls over, the other one picks up the slack. It's like having a raid one with a global hot spare or just raid one. Okay. Funnily enough, as I said, these were still being used until the business moved about six years ago. This is how they ran their, their internet. Now what they're using is a 10 meg SDSL connection currently, but these are what they had. Now I had not seen a RAD um, modem for years. They do work. And they work quite well. Uh, well, at least they power up quite well. But that's what they are. And um, that's how they, they ran their, their internet, basically. A low latency, high ping speed, ISDN connection. I can't for the life of me remember how fast that connection was. But, you know, so... We might tear them down and have a sticky beak at them uh, at a later date, but there we are. Quick IT acquisitions video for you for a Saturday. Stick around, we'll see what else crops up throughout the day. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.